Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about density. Density compares two things. It compares the mass and the volume of an object. The equation used to calculate density is density equals the mass divided by the volume. Essentially, it's a measure of the amount of mass per unit of volume. And the units of density is grams per milliliter. You may also see grams per cubic centimeter because a cubic centimeter and a milliliter are the same thing. Let's look at an example. Let's say that you have a metal you're not sure exactly what kind, but it has a mass of 13.38 grams and it has a volume of 1.5 milliliters. We can now solve for the density. That is the mass, 13.38 grams, divided by the volume, 1.50 milliliters. If you do this math, it works out to 8.92 grams per milliliter. You can actually use the density now to identify the metal because all objects have a characteristic density at a given temperature. In this case, 8.92 grams per milliliter corresponds to copper. You can also look at densities to compare different objects. For example, let's say that you have a beaker. It's full of water. The density of water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. Ice has a lower density at 0.92 grams per mil. That's why ice can float on water. Something like copper, on the other hand, with a density that is higher than that of water, will sink to the bottom of the beaker. Let's also take a moment to talk about specific gravity. Specific gravity is the term for when you compare the density of a sample, like that of ice or copper, to the density of water. So we would say that the specific gravity of ice is 0.92 grams per milliliter divided by the density of water, which is one, Thus, the specific gravity of ice is 0.92. Now let's talk about some applications of density in biology, because most of what we've talked about so far is something that you would actually see in an introductory chemistry class, that is, calculations like these. But density plays a big role in biology, too. For example, gene density. Gene density is the number of genes per million base pairs in DNA. Population density is another one. Population density is the number of individuals per some unit of area. And so something like population density plays a large role when we're talking about population ecology. Stomata density is another one. Stomata density is simply the number of stomata still per unit of area, but this time talking about the number of stomata per unit of area on a leaf. Of course, stomata are those openings that leaves use to exchange gases during photosynthesis. And finally, there's something called density-dependent inhibition. What that means is that most cells receive cues from their environment, and when they reach a certain density in the body, they stop growing. And that is how normal, healthy cells work. Cancer cells, on the other hand, they, they lack this density-dependent inhibition. That is, even when they grow very densely, they keep growing, they keep dividing, they keep multiplying, and so rather than stopping like normal tissues, they grow out of control, resulting in a tumor. So these are all places where density plays a role in biological applications. That's it for today's lesson. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time at Biology Professor.